what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the value of x and y for which x squared minus y squared is equal to 24 and xy is equal to 35. i'm going to be calling this equation one and I'll call this equation two. Now from equation two, from equation two, our first step will be for us to make y the subject. And we can achieve that by dividing both sides by x. So xy is equal to 35, that's equation two. Making y subject means we divide both sides by x. So x cancels x leaving behind y to be equal to 35 over x so we've been able to make y the subject so we can call this equation three our next step will be for us to put equation three in equation one so put equation three in equation one that means Whenever we see y in equation 1, we're going to be substituting 35 over x. So we have in equation 1, x squared minus y, y is 35 over x. And this is raised to a power of 2, so we're going to be raising this to a power of 2, equal to 24. So equal to 24. Now let's simplify this expression. We have x squared minus, according to indices, the power here affects the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes 35 squared, which gives 1225 all over x squared. x squared, that's it equal to 24. Our next step will be for us to clear the fraction and we do that by multiplying through by x squared. So x squared times x squared minus 1225 over x squared times x squared. Remember we are multiplying through by x squared equal to 24 times x squared so x squared times x squared give us x to the fourth minus x squared here cancels x squared here leaving behind one two two five so one two two five equal to 24 times x squared gives 24 x squared our next step will be for us to move 24x squared to the left hand side so that we have x to the fourth. As 24x squared crosses to the left, it becomes minus 24x squared. I've already got negative 1, 2, 2, 5. So let's write that down negative 1, 2, 2, 5. And since nothing remains on the right hand side, I'm going to be putting zero there. Let's continue. Now notice that x to the fourth can also be written as x squared raised to the power of two. Because from indices, powers multiply. So two times two gives four. Minus 24x squared minus one, two, two, five equal to zero so we have a quadratic equation in x squared or we can just say let x squared be equal to p so wherever we see x squared we're going to be putting p there so this becomes p squared so p squared minus 24p 24p minus 1 2 2 5 
is equal to 0. So we have a quadratic equation. Well, this quadratic equation can be factorized. This is negative 24, and this is negative 1, 2, 2, 5. So which means when I have negative 49 and 25, which is a factor of 1, 2, 2, 5, negative 1, 2, 2, 5, their multiplication gives us negative 1, 2, 2, 5. Why their addition gives negative 24. So this is a factor. So this is p squared minus 49p plus 25p. So these are the two factors. Minus 1, 2, 2, 5 equal to 0. Now from these first two terms, p is common, so factor out p. Now p squared divided by p, I'll be having p minus 49p divided by p, I'll be having 49. Plus, what is common here? 25 is common, so bring out 25. And repeat what is in this bracket here. P minus 49 equal to 0. Now, P minus 49 is common, so I can factor that out. P minus 49, factor that out. Now, P times P minus 49 divided by P minus 49, I've got P plus 25 times P minus 49 divided by P minus 49, I've got 25 equal to 0. So we have two cases. We have P minus 49 to be equal to 0, P minus 49 to be equal to 0, and we have P plus 25 to be equal to 0. So for the first case, let's call this case 1, and let's call this case 2. So for the first case, P will be equal to, as negative 49 crosses to the right, it becomes positive 49. So P is equal to 49. For the second case, P is equal to, as 25 crosses to the right, it becomes negative 25. Now, let's recall that we said let x squared be equal to p. So, recall that we said let x squared be equal to p. So, for case 1, x squared is equal to p. And p for case 1 is 49. So this is 49. Now to get the value of x, I'm going to be taking the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49. So square root cancel squared, leaving behind x. To be equal to plus or minus the square root of 49 is 7. Now, from this second case, we're also putting the value of p here. So this is x squared equal to negative 25. Now, take the square root of both sides in order to cancel the square. So the square root of x squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 25. So this Square root cancels off the square, leaving behind x to be equal to plus or minus. Well, negative 25 is the same as negative 1 times 25. And this can be x equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. So x will be equal to plus or minus. Well, the square root of negative 1 is i, which is iota, times 25. The square root of 25 
is 5. So this result to plus or minus i times 5 is 5i. So we have a complex solution for x here and a root solution for x. Now let's find the corresponding value for y in the next slide. So let me rewrite the values for x for these two cases. So for case 1, we've got x to be equal to plus or minus 7. That means x1 is 7 and x2 is negative 7. Why for case 2, we have complex solutions for x. x is equal to plus or minus 5i which means x3 is positive 5i and x sub 4 is equal to negative 5i. So let's look for the corresponding values for y. Recall that from equation 3 that y is equal to 35 over x. So to get the corresponding value for y when x is equal to 7, that's x sub 1, corresponding value for y will be equal to 35 divided by 7. And this is equal to 5. So one solution we have x, x sub 1, y sub 1 is equal to 7, 5. Now, let's go for when x is equal to negative 7. So this is x sub 2. So the corresponding value for y will be equal to 35 divided by x, which is negative 7. So 35 divided by negative 7 is negative 5. So our second solution for x and y is equal to negative 7 and 5. Now let's move to our case 2, which is a complex solution. So this time, when x is equal to 5i, that is s of 3, the corresponding value for y is equal to 35 divided by x, which is 5i. And since I have a complex number in the numerator, we have to rationalize simply by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by i. So multiply the numerator by i, also multiply the denominator by i. So this gives 35 times i is 35i divide by 5i times i is 5i squared. And remember that i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So this is 35i divide by negative 5. So 35 divide by negative 5 I'm going to be having negative 7i. So our third solution we've got for x and y is equal to, for x is 5i, y is negative 7i. Now when x, this time, is equal to negative 5i, now, the corresponding value for y, which is y4, will be equal to 35 divided by negative 5i. Let's rationalize because of the complex number in the denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by i. So this gives 35 times i is 35i divided by negative 5i times i is negative 5i squared. So i squared is actually negative 1. So 
negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. So this is 35i divided by 5. And 35i divided by 5 gives 7i. So the corresponding value for x and y is equal to x is negative 5i and the corresponding value for y is 7i. And these are the four solutions for x and y. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.